Right, um, our next presentation is uh, from uh, Simon Richards uh, with a, a case history of the, um, the work that uh, he's been doing at uh, Charters Towers. Um, Simon completed his PhD at uh, Newcastle in, uh, Uni in 2005 uh, where he used gravity to um, image 3D subsurface geometry of granite plutons. He then moved to ANU uh, with, using structural geology and seismic tomography. He generated the first comprehensive 3D and 4D models of subduction slabs. Uh, in 2009, Simon accepted a lecturing position of structural geology at James Cook. And, but since 2012, Simon's been working at Nautilus and now for City Gold, where he's head of geology, exploration and geophysics. Simon. Thank you very much for the introduction. And um, thanks, everybody, for, for turning up this afternoon. Um, I know there's a bit of a bit of discussion going on around this uh, presentation or these couple of presentations. Um, I guess what what my role here is as a as a client of Adrock, um, we had a couple of special problems at City Gold that we needed to to resolve. And um, what I'm really going to do today is present to you just the the information and just the data so that you guys alone can actually make a, a judgment call for yourself on um, whether or not it actually works or not. Um, we haven't done anything to the data other than in, in, included into, a, um, into our 3D sort of geological models. Okay, so I'm going to present to you all the data. There's no you know, hidden interpretations or anything like that. It's, it's uh, for you to look at. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is go over the, the actual geology of Charters Towers because I think that's actually important because it's one of the sort of experimental parameters, I guess. The, the rock types and the nature of the mineralisation are quite important in terms of whether or not the system's going to work. Um, also, some of the problems that we've got in Charters Towers in terms of, like, you know, why did we go to Adrock to, to try and solve some of our problems. Um, and then I'll go over a couple of the case studies, like a couple of the scans that, that these guys um, spent some time doing out at, um, out at City Gold, and I'll tell you exactly how they did it and what information they had, what they didn't have, and what the results are. Um, and then we can go on to questions after that. Um, okay, as a working for a private company, I've got to put this disclaimer up. Obviously, this is just interpretation at the moment, and none of the results have any impact on anything like um, uh, reserves or resources. Okay, so um, that's the main thing there. Okay, Charters Towers is a uh, it's a it's a historical gold field. It's produced about six and a half um, up to about eight million ounces of gold already. Um, it was mostly operational in the early or late 1800s to early 1900s when all that gold was produced. Um, City Gold, I've only just started working at City Gold, but um, City Gold's had a mine that's produced about 50,000 ounces and then the target is to go back into the central area underneath Charters Towers and um, expand on the historical uh, mining operations. Um, importantly, the, um, the area is dominated by granite. So all these, all these purple blobs that you see here on the classic sort of geological map, they're all granites that range in composition from tonalites to granite diorites, but it's certainly a, a, a one rock type dominated area. We don't have layered volcanics, we don't have folded sedimentary sequence, we don't have anything like that. Okay, so the, um, the mineralisation itself is hosted within a series of, of north tipping planar fractures. These are not lystric, list they're, they're planar down to about two kilometres. We've got two kilometre deep drill hole and we can match them up down to that depth. Um, and these, these planar fractures, yeah, they dip down at about 45 degrees, they're about a metre wide. I'll show you some photos of those. And that's, those are the structures that actually host the mineralisation. And there's a series of these um, ones up in here. This is the, what we call the central area. That, that pale patch there is the city of Charters Tower sitting right on top of the, the area that we actually want to get to, um, which is one of the problems that I'll go over. And there's another area down here that City Gold's currently um, operating on called the, um, the Warrior uh, and Imperial area. And I'll show you some examples from all of these sites so you get a good feel for, for what's been done. Okay, so um, to give you a bit more of an idea of the, of the geology, this is a, a zoomed in image of the central area, um, so that part underneath Charters Towers. You can see this is an aerial photograph of Charters Towers. This is the main highway running through Charters Towers. The purple lines here are the surface expression of those um, north dipping fractures. The blue is all the underground development that was, it's historical development. Um, this point down here is the deepest point on the structure which starts at surface here. That point there is about 900 metres below surface, so they're pretty extensive. And um, this area here in yellow are the areas that have been extracted or stoped out by the historical mining. And um, we've got drill holes all around here to show that, you know, there's more technical problems rather than the geology that stopped 
gold mining in, in Charters Towers. And we wanted to, to find a technique that we could go and actually explore better these areas that are outside. But they're still quite deep. You know, we're looking 500 metres. Um, the bottom of there is about 500 metres. So we're looking below that, below that depth. OK, so this is a, a semi-schematic sort of diagram of what, what this stuff looks like. Here we have um, the town of Charters Towers. And if we were to, to slice this out and have a look at it um, in a sort of cartoon style here, the host rock to these fractures is, is entirely granite. It's a tonalite or a granite diorite. And these structures are, are a north dipping, um, mostly planar structure. They're, they're continuous. They're sort of full of quartz veins. They're full of altered granite. But the, the mineralisation on them is extremely, it's termed what we call potty, right? It's not nuggety, but it's actually potty at the order of 10 metres up to 100 metres or 200 metres. And um, the difficulty with this is that if we have um, drill rigs sitting on the surface, we excavate um, a walking pavement and we squeeze a drill pad basically into the back of someone's yard and um, we'll put a splay of, of diamond drill holes down through here. And the problem with this is that these drill holes are about four to 800 metres long. And if we were to drill, we'd show you lots of statistics about this, but if you drill 100 metre spacing, the chance of hitting one of these um, sulphide lenses, which can run two, three, four ounces to the tonne, um, you miss them, right? And so drilling is, is an extremely archaic method of trying to, to resolve the, um, the resource potential of this, this ore system. Um, as Gordon's shown, in terms of the, the ADR, or the, the ADROC system, you can more or less walk around through people's gardens and stuff like that. So that's, that's one of the advantages that I'll come back to in the, uh, towards the end of the talk. Um, this is what the tonalite host rock looks like. It's, there's not many fractures. There's a bit of um, clay formation and stuff at the surface. Um, you go through, you know, you're drilling sort of five, six hundred metres of, of granite with no, nothing in it until you get to a, a mineralised structure, which is about um, 60, meters, uh, 60 centimetres to a metre thick. Um, and this, uh, this here has, has continuous or solid um, pyrite and uh, galena and visible gold in through it. So that's what we're chasing in terms of the mineralisation. It's very, very narrow vein, um, semi-continuous veins, but the, the actual gold or the high-grade gold itself is very, very potty. And that's, that's a huge problem when it comes down to drilling. Um, so if we go underground and have a look at what the structures actually look like underground, what the ore looks like underground, here we have uh, granite on either side of the structure. This is the north dipping uh, fracture running through here. Here's altered granite as well. Um, zoom in on this little bit of mineralisation here and you've got altered granite and quartz veins in through here and these semi-continuous lenses and pods of, of sulphides, mainly pyrite and, and galena, um, a bit of um, chalcopyrite and stuff and, and gold in amongst all of this. Um, stuff in here through here. So we know pretty well where the structures are. We've got, we've got at least enough drilling to be able to join the dots between intersections of, um, of the structure to be able to predict pretty well to um, where the actual structure is, right? But we don't know where the mineralisation on that structure actually is. And that was the challenge for, um, for, for geophysics. Um, again, when you're, when you're thinking about drilling, what you want to do is, OK, if you've got a, a huge... Um, disseminated uh, sulphides in a porphyry system, it's pretty easy just to put a couple of drill holes through it and, and at least come across at least some zonation in terms of mineralisation. But this is a, a sample of underground um, where you can see a couple of, of metre long um, face samples were taken. And you can see here the variation in grade of, of sort of 9.6 grams to the tonne, 1.1 and 7 grams to the tonne. Depending on where you drill, you know, it depends on whether or not you'll go in there. And um, resource models can be out by, you know, you're talking 20,000% difference between what they actually extract and what the resource block model, you know, it's purely because the, the variation in the gold grade is, is so, um, so great. Okay, and um, if you go, this is just reinforced again by the fact that if you go, if you go to all the monthly reports that were given by the, uh, the guys in the early 1900s, you can see that these purple points in through here, these are the high grade sections on the old, old workings, and the orange are the sort of the medium grade, and the yellow and white are very, very low grade. And you can see just how patchy this, this gold grade is. Right, so we needed a method to, to try and get rid of, or work out where to put, put drill holes and, and then where to go and chase in terms of um, underground. 
Um, so I've put here a little note that even at 25 metre spacing, um, drilling, it's, it's unreliable, it's extremely expensive. You're know, drilling 600 metres for a one metre intercept. Um, it's pretty demoralising sometimes. Um, it's inaccurate um, because we just don't know where we're, where we're going to end up. It doesn't matter how much structural geology you do on this, it's actually quite difficult to predict um, targets on this. And it's extremely time consuming, you know, drill, because we're drilling through granite, we're talking about um, 30 metres a day. Right, so you can see just how time consuming that this uh, drilling actually becomes. Um, obviously, City Gold, before I got there, City Gold's done a huge amount of geophysics in the past, tried um, a lot of different techniques, in, including TM, IP, uh, downhole IP, downhole radar, um, surface um, uh, mag. And the surface mag is actually quite useful because it, it, it brings up these um, mag lows, which are interpreted to be demagnetised shear zones that have. Um, that have undergone alteration. But in fact, when you get out here and actually uh, walk along some of these, a lot of these are just dikes. Um, they're unmineralized, altered fractures and things like that. So um, the mag is, is very, very good for a regional perspective, but once it starts getting down to pinpointing a, a load of gold that's 10 metres by 10 metres at 500 metres deep, it, it sort of can't do that. Okay, so that's when we, um, when we sort of jumped on to, to ADROC. Um, and we did, we focused on three main areas. I've got two um, scans that I want to show you up here. I've only put one A50 there, but there's another one that I'll show you just over here, um, A63. So there are two scans in the central area. And I've got a couple of scans down in through here. Now, I know we've got discussion afterwards, so I've included a few more if people want to see more, uh, more evidence. But I'll go through a few of these and, um, and show you what we're talking about in terms of, in terms of results. Okay, Gordon's already talked a little bit about this, but as a client, this is what we, what we get via email or whatever. Um, we'll get a, an Excel spreadsheet with a whole lot of um, scans, and yeah, rightly so, a few people said it just looks like a squiggly line. To us, it just looks like a squiggly line as well, until we start thinking a little bit about what, what it is, and then start to incorporate or build it into our 3D geological models. <laughs> and um, when I first, to be honest, when I first started to see this, I was like, oh no, this is gonna be a nightmare to try and interpret. Um, and then, so what we did is we, We've got all this loaded into a 3D model, and we really focused on, on this here, which, um, as far as I understand, this energy log is a, is a composite of a whole lot of other information that's amalgamated into one result. And you can see here, this is a, a typical um, downhole plot that we've got. Um, what I've done, just to, um, to make it a little bit more obvious, is that the lowest value in that curve is automatically assigned a value of 0.001. Right, so um, this value here, even though it sticks right out to the left here, it, it was the lowest value in that entire um, uh, return signal. Okay, so just for visualisation purposes, it's just been pushed across so that we can see that much more easily in our geological model. So we haven't altered the data at all other than assigning that, that value a bit of a lower value so that we can see it better. But nevertheless, it's the, it's the lowest value in that curve. And um, we've realised that anything below at or below 0 0.01 seems to be an indicator of, of some sort of geological feature, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so um, we're just going to be focusing on this one. We're not going to have a look at any of the spectral stuff, any of the gamma stuff or anything like that. So just the energy log. And this is a composite of the, the logs that we've got for those um, scans that I'm going to be talking about. And in the warrior area, which is that area down to the south where we're currently mining, you can see in each one of these curves, there's one or two dominant peaks in them and that there's not much in terms of all this squiggly stuff. Once you pull out the lowest peak, it sort of makes it pretty obvious where the major anomalies are. And so in this one here, A09, this is a training scan, which I'll go over in just a second. Um, this one had one major peak, this one had two major peaks in through here, two in here, two in here, one, and so on and so forth. So I'll come back at this, to this at the very end, but I'll go through a couple of these with, in a lot of detail, including drill cores and stuff like that. Okay, so A09, this was our training hole. We gave ADROC all of the information, including the geology. Um, we told them where the intercepts were, what the grades were, and things like that. And they um, used that to try and categorise the, um, the spectral response um, because we had, a, we had a vertical drill hole. We set up the ADR stuff right next to that vertical drill hole. We could correlate the two and see if there was any, you know, really any correlation between the ADR results and the, um, and the drill hole results. Okay, so what I'm going to show you are screenshots from our 3D model, right? Again, I just I want to show you the absolute facts. Um, all we've done here is I've loaded the drill hole, which is A09, 
All right, so this is this is in a 3D mining program called uh, a mining program called 3D Mine, and superimposed next to that is the location of the scan AO9. So, sorry, CT772 is a is a full diamond drill hole, and AO9 is the scan carried out by Adrock. All right, um, this here is our open pit. These grey surfaces are structures that are interpreted from previous drilling, and the yellow in through here is all the underground development. The depth down here um, is about 300 metres, right? so you can actually see that this is winding down. And the development in here is actually all the underground development that's um, taking out the gold along this structure here. And so the down dip projection of this is simply just, just that. It's just a down dip projection of the, the mining and stuff that's taken place further up. It's also constrained a little bit by um, drilling. And we know that this structure here splits as you come out of the screen. This surface here sits a little bit below, but it also sits out towards us. Um, this secondary structure becomes the, the dominant, um, dominant structure. And in fact, this is the, a plot of that energy log running down through here. We've eliminated the noise. And I'm just showing here the peak that's associated with that, that minimum value. And you can see here that the, that the peak in that energy log corresponds very closely with the, um, with the gold intercept. And I'll show you a bit more information on that right now. Um, this is a zoomed in part of that, that log. Um, here we've got the, in grey, we've got the diamond drill hole location. And then a few metres away we've got the location of the ADR scan. There's the point of that lowest anomaly. This is the gold grade, 34 grams per tonne. Right. The error between the actual location of that intercept and the, the point in the ADR log is about seven metres. Right. So it was about seven metres out in terms of its, its location precision at, at, at depth. This is what that actual intercept looks like in through here. Um, it's, a, it's about a 10 centimetre thick quartz vein with um, a layer of, of galena, a little bit of pyrite and um, some visible gold in it. And so at um, yeah, 182... Uh, meters deep, it's picking up this um, this intercept here. Here you can see the actual gold and lead assays for those two holes. So you can see there's no other high grade gold until you get to this intercept just here, and high grade lead. There is a just a little bit further up. There is another uh, intercept up here of about 13.8 grams per ton, and the ADR didn't actually pick that up. Um, this is a photo here of the of the drill core showing what that intercept looks like. Now, I think the reason why it didn't pick that up is because the, the pyrite in through here is extremely disseminated, and there's just a few little flecks of, of visible gold in through there, right? It's not this nice, coherent, solid quartz band that cuts through the granite. Okay, so then we'll move, so that was that hole just up here, and that was intercepting this northeast dipping structure just in through here. This scan here, A84, was taken on, um, to image the, the site down dip location on this EO3. So this is again a north dipping structure. The surface expression is here. It dips down this way. And um, this is all the underground workings on that. Um, these are different levels. They're about 20, 20 metres vertical between each bench. OK, so um, here is the A84 hole running down through here in grey. And adjacent to that, this red line here shows the major minimum on that curve running down through here. And you can see here that blue surface, again, that's the inferred or the interpreted um, north dipping structure that actually contains the gold. And all this yellow stuff here is the underground workings that City Gold actually op currently operates. And you can see here, as we go down the scan, there are two major anomalies, one just here and one just here. The second one of these occurs at um, about 381.5 metres, which is um, remarkably close to where the uh, where the actual inferred intercept was meant to be based on the structural interpretations. I'll show you that in a bit more detail again. Um, the reason we know that this surface here, this, this blue shaded area, which is, which is our interpreted structure, is because we've got a whole lot of load perpendicular, but also one really nice load parallel drill hole. You can see all these purple and red numbers in through here. Here are the high grade intercepts, up to two and three ounces to the tonne in through here. This is what the, the core actually looks like. So we've got good structural control on where where that ADR scan was meant to, was meant to pick it up, um, which was here at minus 375 metres, but where it did actually pick it up was 381.5 metres. So again, it's about six metres out. But in terms of one peak, you know, there's 
I'll, I'll come back to this peak here after when we start discussion. But in terms of this, there's, there's one major peak, and that major peak corresponds to where we'd expect it at that EO3 intercept. OK? Um, so we're going to move a little bit further south. I'm going to show you another example. This is the north dipping, what we call the EO7 structure. It's parallel, but sits structurally below the one that we just looked at. Again, it dips north at about 45 degrees. And there's a, a couple of scans in through here that, that I took, and I've got information at the end of the, um, the, the talk to show you that if you want to. But the one I'm going to show you now is this A56 scan. Um, one of the things that we had here, we were pretty keen to put a drill hole in the middle of this lake, but obviously for environmental reasons, we can't go drilling sump, uh, digging sumps and filling it with um, um, drill holes and things like that. So we had to drill out here, but um, Adrock were turning up before we had this drill hole started, and we said, just for a bit of fun, let's scan here and see what we were going to hit, had the drill, um, drill hole been put where we really wanted to, rather than stepping it off to the side. So this scan was completed before we actually started the drill hole. Um, again, this is zoomed in on that area. This is the, the diamond drill pad, and this is the, um, the ADR scan. It's about 75 metres between those two. This is the scan result. Again, this is the energy, uh, the e-log plot, and you can see there's one major um, anomaly. Again, this is just the lowest of all of the anomalies, and this was at minus 467 metres. And this was ideal because um, at the time that we got these results back, we hadn't actually started this drill hole. We thought, oh, yeah, okay, well, you know, we should see the intercept in the drill hole at, at that depth. Um, this is the assay starting at 400 metres down, um, going down to this 470 metres, and the, the samples go down through here until we hit this high grade gold and high grade lead hit in through there. And um, that anomaly there is at 463 metres. The predicted anomaly from the ADR was 467 metres. This is what the actual intercept looks like. It's about 60 centimetres of um, quite coherent um, pyrite and galena with pretty high gold grades, 37.9 grams to the tonne, and very, very high lead grades, which I think is, is a key, um, key thing of this. Is, um, so it's 7,200 parts per million um, lead in the form of galena. So um, in terms of, of this, this was a nice test because we had an anomaly that we could then um, drill hole. And I guess this was the turning point for me and that you know, this sort of started to convince me that this is actually, you know, I'm not 100% sure what it's telling us, but it's telling us something. There's, uh, I don't think there's any denying that. Um, and again, it's, it's about five metres out. Okay, so um, again, we had another couple of, of scans take place in the central area. Um, this is all the historical working that was taking place in the 1920s, thereabouts. Um, two areas of interest sit down to the down dip and outside here at about 700 metres deep, and same sort of depth out through here. This scan here was of interest because no one's allowed to do any mining or any, um, any drilling or anything in Listener Park. It's actually a mining uh, heritage area. Even the old timers weren't allowed to mine under it. So again, this was a sort of tongue-in-cheek scan to see you know, if we were allowed to drill here, um, what would we actually find? So um, that was one of the key holes. And this one here is drilling an area that we have. Again, we've got another parallel diamond drill hole sitting just here. So we could compare the results of the two. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just go over this one first, A63. Um, this is the scan. Again, this is a, a screenshot from our 3D um, geological modelling program. It's just zoomed in on the area of interest. Um, this is the bottom part of scan A63. This is 650 metres here, 720 metres here. And you can see this is the actual scan itself, the full scan from surface. And you can see there are two distinct anomalies. Um, now, this area had this diamond drill hole drilled in uh, 1995. And there were two very, very high grade intercepts, one 183 grams per tonne and 1,200, um, uh, 12,000 ppm um, lead. And in through here, you're talking 15.8 grams per tonne, but again, very high lead, 8,100 ppm lead, both in the form of galena and, and little bits of visible gold in through there. Um, there's 30 metres uh, distance between the location of the diamond drill hole and where we could do the scan. And in terms of being out, these are, there's one other anomaly further up, but I'll talk a bit about that a bit later. Um, there's two major intercepts. This is what they know as the, the brilliant hanging wall, and this is what they know is the brilliant foot wall. The scan only had these two in it, and they were 0.8 and 0.9 metres out in terms of their vertical depth. 
um, of precision. So again, two intercepts, and there seems to be in this um, log two anomalies that correspond with those intercepts. There is another intercept in the diamond drill hole that sits up around here, and there's nothing in the ADR data. You might think, well, why, why on earth is it picking up something that's you know 858 grams to ton gold um, and 7,000 ppm um, lead? That intercept is only about this thick. Um, it's a bit of quartz. It's got a couple of chunks of pyrite, a little bit of galena, and these big chunks of gold in it. Right, so it's a very, very thin intercept. It's less than five centimetres thick. Um, it's oops, it's 460 metres down and um, it contains the pyrite and stuff isn't connected. Okay, so this is the final one. Um, this is the one that was taken um, on the other side of, of the central area uh, at what we call Listener Park. This is A50. This scan had two major anomalies, uh, one at minus 220 metres, the other one at 700 metres. This is a, um, a long section looking at looking straight onto that um, north dipping structure and so it's dipping down and towards us and you can see here that the intercept um, and the predicted or the interpreted structure is about 15 metres out. This one we just don't know about. Uh, we don't know whether there's another structure up there but everywhere else in, um, in the central area of Charters Towers there are reefs at, at shallower levels. Uh, we just haven't been able to drill them out. And you can see here there's a couple of drill holes around this one that help constrain the location of this, this structure. And you can see a 12 grams, 110, uh, 22. That's the interpreted surface. And this is the anomaly point in the, in the scan. Right? So there's only one, oh, there's two anomalies, sorry. There's one lower down, and it's within about 15 metres of what we've interpreted to be the structure. But, you know, we've interpreted the structure to be dead flat, um, which it may not be. So again, I come back to this because this is the, um, the sort of the, the crux of the whole story in that each one of these very, very low peaks in the energy log appear from at least the preliminary interpretations appear to correspond with our high grade and our known structural intercepts. And you know, I have to sort of, I'm not here to try and convince you, but at least let you know that you know, the, the guys at Adrock didn't actually have the data other than from one drill hole. And so they couldn't have fudged this data. And um, the other interesting thing is that we know that there are other anomaly, uh, other structures, other north dipping structures that sit at structurally higher and structurally lower levels that look identical to the mineralised ones, but they don't have any mineralisation in it. Right? And the key thing about this is that it's, it's, not, it's going straight through those structures. So it's not recognising structures that don't have sulphides in it. Right? So for a preliminary, preliminary method that's, that's telling us there's at least some sulphides on the structure at that point, it seems to be working okay. And we've got a lot of work to, to do in terms of drilling out more of these results and um, just proving up whether or not they're there. So in summary, um, Charters Towers is a very, very unique style of mineralisation that requires a unique approach. And um, you know, we're sort of lucky to have, have come across this. Um, traditional techniques have been unsuccessful, and mainly because of the, the very, very small size of gold lenses, uh, the gold-bearing lenses on the structure. Um, the presence of, a, of an active city over the, like right over the top, our portal is right in the middle of town, um, so it's very, very difficult to drill. It's difficult to do things like EM or IP or seismic or anything like that. Um, the depth of, depth of mineralisation is below 400 metres, and um, there's certainly other factors that mask um, the, the signature of the mineralisation, including things like dikes and um, other altered shear zones and things like that, which the ADR seems to go straight through with, with very little um, effort. Um, at this point, ADR appears to have successfully imaged the targets in, in three separate areas, and I've got more examples after this if you need to see them. Um, drilling has certainly confirmed the presence of the anomalies that the ADR had predicted. Um, so we did drill test the anomaly. And um, sort of simple geology and, and a marked difference in the properties between the host granite, I think this is one of the key points, that there is a big difference between the, the granite, which is very, very uniform. It's a, it's a uniform rock type, and then suddenly you come across this um, sulphide or galena and, and gold-bearing structure. I think that's one of the keys to, to producing this, this anomaly in the energy log. But that's what we've done so far. And um, certainly from a client perspective, we're pretty, pretty excited about the technology. Thank you. Thank you.